If we think of our immune system as a defense mechanism, which it is, then let's take stock of our defenses. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And we start talking about the defense mechanism. Well, what are we defending against? I mean, is someone attacking us? Is this, uh, is this something that, well, the reality of the biological world is that it's, it's almost, it's, you know, we can consider it a chemical and biological warfare going on all the time. The body is uh, being exposed to things that want to eat its own lunch, right? I mean, it wants to parasites, bacteria. There's, so there's really four bug types that I think of, okay? We've got the smallest of viruses. Then we've got the bacteria, which can be very, very small all the way to fairly large. Uh, and they can also grow in colonies so they can, they can get much bigger. When, then we have the um, fungus, which is, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that can be, again, much larger and, and kind of a cross between a plant and a bacteria. Not really. I mean, it's its own kingdom. But, you know, the fungi, I did my PhD on fungi. So um, we've got that issue and there's a whole bunch. So it's viruses, bacteria, fungus, and then parasites, the full-on parasites. These are little worms and bugs, everything from single-celled paramecium, amoeba, those kind of things, to, you know, worms that are feet long, you know, tapeworms and, and hookworms and roundworms and whatnot. So these are the typical invaders. I'm going to classify, you know, those are the, those are the four classes of invaders. But then there's also, um, there's things that go wrong in our own bodies, right? There's, you know, the, the cancer cells, the cells that grow wrong, uh, that the immune system is defending against, right? The immune system is in, involved in that. And there's chemicals, you know, foreign material, uh, dust particles, that, you know, physical foreign material, dust particles that get into the lungs, uh, that get into the, to the body, uh, you know, through cuts or, or through impacts. If you get a cut and you get dirt in the cut and then the wound heals over, that dirt, that material has to be managed or taken care of by the immune system. It's pretty much how it all, it's all working that way. So it's everything from physical defense, uh, you know, in terms of physical material, um, and then chemical defense, you know, the, the, the immune system will actually eat up chemicals, and then biological defense. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's not something that we have to, um, you know, we don't have to think about, thankfully, we don't have to actually set up our perimeter defenses and and, but there are some things that we can do that would make a huge difference to a boost and support to our immune system. And if you look throughout history of our lifespan, our lifespan jumped dramatically, not with the advent of medicine, not with the advent of, of understanding uh, how to use essential oils. Uh, none of that. It's the, the big jump in our life expectancy came with simple hygiene. Right, simply washing our hands. Uh, for example, surgical procedures became more successful, uh, dramatically more successful when they figured out if they washed their hands before they went to do and cut, and then if they wore masks, uh, because we've got you know bacteria in the in the mouth and 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 in the lungs and fungus in the lungs, and we're breathing those out. And so a healthy person is is holding. The, uh, let me hear this. A healthy person is a carrier of just about all those things. Okay, so in other words, you're never going to get away from it. You cannot, you cannot get away from these biologicals. Okay, they're going to be there. They're there all the time. Uh, st strep and staff are on the skin. Uh, you know, the, these are these are things that are just there. So it's very important that we minimize our exposure and that we do ha have healthy practices. So washing our hands. So if you come in from the outside, come into your home, your home should be the, the, the clean or, you know, try to be cleaner, right? Because you have control over what's in your home. And so we go in and, for our house, the first thing everyone does when we walk in the house, everyone, and we grill this with the kids, everyone wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, even the adults. Okay. So if I come in from the outside, now I'm not so, not so much my own yard, but I'm talking about from out and about, because out in public, I've been touching, you know, there's, there's, I've been touching door handles and I've been touching, uh, you know, shopping carts and, and I've been, and I'm getting exposed. Those, those contact points 
are areas where more viruses and bacteria, you know, someone wipes their nose and handles the next door handle. So those are the viruses and bacteria and, and fungus and, and even parasites that are, are that's, that's a port of entry. So through the, through everyday exposure, if you wash your hands, it doesn't even have to be with soap, actually. You know, most of the, the stuff gets literally washed off just with, just with vigorous washing with water, okay? Now, on top of it, you say, well, yeah, I want to use antibacterial soap. No, you don't. The typical commercial antibacterial soap. Uh, first of all, you have to understand that bacteria are only one category of, of all those, okay? So you're not going to do anything against viruses and, and uh, uh, fungus and parasites uh, when you have those chemical uh, the chemical laden antibacterial soaps, but you are, and it's been proven, going to damage the immune system. This is a very, very important concept, people. You can't damage the immune system and defend your body with, you know, you can't defend your body with chemicals if those chemicals damage the immune system. And this is the issue that I'm bringing up with vaccines. This is the issue with the, the uh, antimicrobial hand soap, uh, things that are the chemicals that are used to kill these bugs right, damage the immune system, and so we are end up being worse off. I question, you know, whether the, the population at a, at a large is benefiting from, you know, these, these concepts of spraying large quantities of, the, of real estate with chemicals for, for bug control if that spray is going to fundamentally damage and weaken people's immune systems and cause illnesses down the road. So it's like, okay, I might be, might be avoiding uh, communicable diseases, mosquito-borne diseases right now, but down the road, if I just set up a, a, a weakened system where we've got a whole bunch of people who are going to end up with, with problems, very expensive problems, y y you follow what I'm saying? So it's a tough one. And in, in the public health uh, enthusiasts who, you know, they want to have uh, they want to see no diseases right now, and I would rather actually have healthy people with that are able to fight off small amounts of diseases or, or low-grade diseases rather than no diseases out there. I, I, I just think that our if you look at how our system is built, it's built for small-scale exposures. Uh, we're supposed to have little exposures, and that's the herd immunity. And in fact, if you look up research on chickenpox, and, and since chickenpox vaccine came out, now we're seeing adults with shingles because we lost the herd immunity because the adults are no longer getting low-grade exposures to chickenpox because we wiped out the chickenpox in children. Uh, and so now adults don't get this low-grade exposure. So what we really want is a healthy population to, in order to have good herd immunity, if we're talking about that, um, so we've got the immunity out there of the what we call herd immunity, and that's best, best, it, it is fed best when we have low-grade exposures, okay? Many, several small, low-grade exposures, and we get this little immune boost along the way. The other issue is, um, you know, our own household and and what kind of, of, you know, immunity do we have in here? And again, that's where if we keep things clean, now... It is, it is possible to be too clean. In other words, if we don't get exposed to anything ever, uh, then when we're not prepared, then when something does come along. I, I really don't think that's, that's all that significant. I mean, I'd love to see some studies. I know there are some studies of, of uh, kids, farm kids that grew up on the farm, a little bit more exposed to dirt, a lot more exposed to dirt, a lot more exposed to animal poop and things like that. And they're actually overall healthier than, than the city person. Now, my question there is, when you're making those studies, are you counting for toxicity, right? So there may be lower toxicity on a natural farm than there is in a city where the person's getting exposed all the time. So I don't think that's necessarily, we gotta have to, some of those studies may not, may not really be factoring all the, all the issues. It's a complicated issue, okay? But back to our own defense, right? So personal defense, washing our hands is really the number one thing we can do to minimize the exposure inside of our house after we come in from outside. And I like to use an essential oil-based soap because I think the essential oils actually help give us a little bit of a boost of a defense. That's the plant's natural defense mechanisms. And so the plant doesn't have an immune system. It doesn't have little cells that run around that mop up uh, uh, you know, exposures, but they do have chemicals. They make the essential oil molecules and those help 
defend against the, uh, the, the invasions. And so we can have an essential oil-based uh, soap, like the Thieves Foaming Hand Soap, for example, or you can take your, um, um, you know, your, your bath gel and dilute it, uh, you know, a quarter in water and, uh, and get, you know, the you, same thing. You get your foaming, you get your, your soap effect, or you can wash off your grunge. Uh, and then we get the actual boost of the essential oils. The Thieves Blend is fabulous for that. So this is just one of those uh, elements of watching our defense. Now, again, when we talk about the immune system as a defense mechanism, uh, I tend to, you know, want to be fearful. The body is amazingly designed. God is an amazing, uh, has a designed an amazing system to keep us healthy. We just have to honor that. And I'll talk a little bit more about psychoneuroimmunology in another video, which is the effect of our mind on our immune system. Did you know that our mind actually, there's a direct connection, psychoneuroimmunology. If we think good thoughts, we boost the actual function of the cells in our immune system. Isn't that awesome? Uh, and so that's an exciting prospect that we can boost our own immune system just by having a good thought, having good thoughts. Okay, so we'll talk more about that on another video. Okay, so the defense mechanisms, can we bolster our defenses? So I'm gonna do a little breathing now, uh, and I love to use the essential oils, uh, and I breathe in, right? And I'm gonna breathe a, 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 you know, sort of a cover around me, this defense. Now this is just, you know, artificial, um, you know, imagination on my part, but the, the skin, the reason I'm saying this is the skin has uh, immune capabilities. The lungs have spe specialized immune capabilities. Any port of entry in the digestive system is heavily fortified with the immune system. And so these ports of entry, these places where, where stuff could come in, are heavily fortified with immune, with immune uh, support, okay? So like I said, the lungs. So we breathe into the lungs and just feel and then, and then breathe in a, a extra boost to the immune cells. Like I said, your mind does control, uh, has an influence on this. So I'm gonna breathe in and I'm gonna feel and activate, I'm gonna call forth the, the, warrior, uh, the warrior cells, the protection mechanisms, okay? And just to be standing guard and, and to take care of any invasions. I'm gonna breathe into my nose, up into my nasal passages, my mouth, all these areas are ports of entry, my eyes, and I'm breathing protection into those, um, and then that, down the gut, and then so, so the skin, I mean, these are the basic areas, the skin, and just feeling uh, the, the, my intention going over and, and, and sending this energy, protective mechanisms, right? armor of faith, whatever it, you want to think of it, however you want to think of it. But to me, there's a real connection uh, through the breath. You know, I've been doing this all year. So, um, but the essential oils come in and I can grab any old essential oil. Let's see what I have here. I've got purification sitting right here, purification. And so I can take that purification, put a few drops in my hand, right? And then wave it. And then I'm going to put some on my skin, breathe it up into my nasal passages, in my mouth, into my lungs, and just feel the tingle, right? It gives me that sensation to highlight my awareness to that defensive. Now I've got these, these defenses activated and empowered. It's like giving ammo to my, to my little warriors. Okay, and and so there's just one of the ways that I can use uh, a couple essential oils with my with my little mental exercises here in terms of my therapeutic breath. Okay, so keep in mind hygiene, basic washing. If you even if you have no soap and you have no uh, uh, no uh, no protection of any chemical method, uh, just washing your hands with water will do most of what it needs to do. So just wash your hands vigorously, rub around, and the water will wash off most of your bacteria. It's been proven. Uh, and you can even do that study yourself. Go and just go to the store, wash, do your shopping cart. Take, do not wash your hands when you come into your house. Put you know, get have have plates of Jello prepared. Touch the couple plates of Jello. Then go and wash your hands with just with water, and then touch the a couple more plates of Jello, and then wash your hands with the soap, and then touch a couple more plates of Jello, and see how much grows on these plates of Jello. Okay. Um, it would be the same thing as a petri dish. 
Okay, happy wellness one day at a time.